Hello YouTubers! Well, it's been a while since I've talked about my fume hood and I thought I'd give you a little bit of an update on it because I have done some um, renovation work on it and it's 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 becoming more and more of like a professional fume hood, okay? It's working pretty good. You know, back when I first built this thing a couple of years ago, I did pretty much everything wrong with it except building the box. The box actually turned out to be pretty good. If I have any complaints about the box, it's a little small. It could be a little bigger, it could be a little wider, it could be a little taller. But you know, I doubt anybody has a fume hood that's big enough for everything they want to do. At least I can do the really nasty stuff in here so that, you know, I don't have to breathe the fumes or, you know, get them on my skin or whatever. It can just all happen in there. Yeah, it's not big enough for me to set up my full distillation apparatus. It's not big enough for several other things I want to do. But like I said, probably nobody has a fume hood that's big enough for everything they want to do. But uh, yeah, the four-sided box worked out pretty good. You know, it's just got the, the two sides, the back and the top. The bottom is, is open. It's just the, the workbench is the, is the bottom of it. And uh, the front, I put the plexiglass doors on. And the plexiglass doors actually worked out pretty good, too, the way I had them on there. Um, I have these little little catches here to hold them shut and I've recently replaced the doors just because they were all scratched up and stained with stuff that was not coming off and I wanted you to be able to see inside when I'm doing stuff so I replaced the uh, the doors and I have 3d printed plastic hinges now on the doors because the steel hinges that were on there before were all rotted out from the chemical fumes so hopefully these plastic hinges will hold up much better with stainless steel hardware. We'll see. Don't have a lot of faith that the stainless steel is going to hold up, but it's probably better than regular mild steel. We'll see. But anyway, with the, uh, with the, the, the new um, doors, you'll be able to see inside better. When I'm doing stuff, I'll be able to film inside it better. But speaking of seeing inside, check that out. I got the lighting working again. So, one thing I did wrong back in the beginning when I put the original lighting in was I put LED strip lights around the sides on the inside. And, yeah, that worked for a couple weeks. And then the chemicals just totally destroyed the strip lights. And they totally ate up the wiring going to the strip lights. And that was just a disaster. So, um, I, had to, I had to, I went without lighting for a while, for quite a while actually. Just because I couldn't think of a better way to do it. And uh, so now I've got a, up on top here, I've got a in-ceiling can light, above-ceiling can light up there, and with an LED bulb in it. And it's, uh, I'll give you a close-up of the hole in the top of the uh, fume hood that that shines down through here in a little bit, because there's a story behind why that hole's there. So anyway, I've got lighting again, so that's a beautiful thing. I've got, uh, I, I, up until recently, I always having to uh, plug in and unplug the blower and the light. So now I've got a little, uh, a little panel here that I can just turn them on and off easy enough. So that's the blower, and that's the light. So I can just turn them on and off right here, easy enough, without having to uh, reach around and plug them in the outlet strip over there. So that's, that's a nice little uh, addition. So, why is there a hole in the top of the, uh, of the fume hood? Well, if you go back and watch some of my early videos when I first built this fume hood, because I videoed it, and I built, videoed several updates, because like I said, I did everything wrong pretty much up front. Um, I had a bathroom vent fan up here. Commonly known as a fart fan, haha, <laughs> up here. And that was my original fan for ventilating the, the fumes out of the fume hood. And that did not work. <laughs> that, that vent fan was totally destroyed in very short order by the, uh, the fumes com coming off the chemicals I was working with in there. Just totally destroyed. And worse yet, while it was in the process of destruction, nasty rust-filled condensate would drip down all over the inside of the fume hood over whatever I was trying to work with and try to keep clean. So I came, quickly came to the realization that, that, a couple of realizations. Number one, I couldn't use that kind of fan. And number two, it shouldn't be mounted up on top where condensate can drip down on things. So now you can see there's a hole in the back there. 
and that that leads out to the uh, to the fan I'm using now, which is uh, I'll give you a close up look at that too. It's a uh, bilge blower, sealed bilge blower, explosion proof. Um, it's meant to be able to to vent um, fuel fumes out of the bilge of a boat without worrying about having an explosion. Well, since the motor's sealed, you also don't have to worry about the chemicals getting into it. So it lasts a lot longer than uh, the original um, vent fan that I was using so that's a big improvement I'll take the camera around and show you the back and you can see that but uh, still got some issues with it but uh, and still sort of have a list of things I want to do to uh, to modify it um, I like I said I just put these new doors on just to, today replace the plexiglass and I've got them overlapping this time so you can only open one at a time and I did that on purpose because I like to, like if I'm, I'm working on some sort of project right here on the uh, hot plate and I'm going to add something to it and I'm worried about a ferocious, furious boil over, which has happened a few times, what I can do is I can sort of reach around and use this as a shield as I do it to, to protect me. And then with the doors overlapping, if there is some sort of violent boil over, nothing can come straight out you know through there there was a there was a gap there before so now there's not a gap so that's good um let's see i'll give you a, i'll give you a look at what i did uh one problem i was worried about because you know the lighting issue i didn't know what to do with lights because i figured any kind of light i put in here is going to be rapidly destroyed by the fumes the same as the original lights and the original blower were so i figured i'm going to have to completely isolate the light from the inside of the uh, fume hood. And I thought about, you know, like explosion proof lights, again, like they have on boats and industrial things. But again, they're all made of metal that's going to be rapidly attacked by the, the chemicals in here and destroyed. So I thought, well, okay, I've got this hole in the top. What if I just mount a light up here above the top of the fume hood and then put a sheet of glass in there for the light to shine through so that this is completely isolated from what's going on inside the fume hood. So that's what I did. And let me take the camera off the tripod and I'll show you that. Well, I got to wondering about how I could mount a sheet of glass up there easy. And I hope this is showing up. Let me turn the light off, actually. There you go. That actually shows up a little better with the light off. Well, I had this old picture frame laying around with glass in it. And I thought, well, I'll just screw this picture frame up to the to the top to the ceiling of the fume hood, cover that hole, and that the light from the, the light will shine down through the glass, and this will keep the fumes from getting up into the light and rotting it out. So this this seems to be working pretty good. It's it's a fairly new modification. It's been a while, but it's fairly new. But so far so good. We'll see how it lasts in the long run. I think it's gonna be okay. So that was one cheap and quick and easy way to uh, isolate the light from what's going on inside the fume hood so we don't have any, any chance of rotting it out. Now let me go around back and I'll show you uh, the blower. So here's the blower I'm using. Like I said, it's a bilge blower from a bolt, 12 volts. I've got a 12-volt uh, power supply from an old laptop up here that's, that's powering it. And what I'm thinking about doing is I think I'm just going to box in this whole area up on top here just to protect everything up here from the from the weather and run the wiring a little neater just to, to keep it from getting tangled up and and in the weather again but uh, so I got the power supply runs the blower quite well let me, let me turn it on not too loud right now because it's fairly new it's only been on here I don't know about a month month or so you turn it back off. Now, even though this works a lot better than the original blower I used, I do still consider this to be a consumable item. I get maybe six to eight months out of one of these. Even though it's all sealed, eventually all the nastiness going through here will destroy the motor or destroy the bearings or destroy the blades on the fan, one or the other. I've had kind of all three happen. So eventually. So I still consider this to be a consumable item, but this is so cheap, under $30, and it takes me like 
five minutes to replace it that I'm not too worried about it. Now, that being said, I am using like the cheapest bilge blower I can find on Amazon too. Maybe if I bought something a little better quality, maybe it would last a lot longer. I don't know. Maybe the next time I need to replace this, I will buy a better quality one. But for now, you know, these cheap ones work pretty good. Um, they're nice and quiet when they're new. You can start to, you can tell when they're on their way out, when they start getting really loud and really rattly and it's like okay time to order another one off of Amazon because this one's getting near the end of its lifespan so they give you a warning before they fail which is also nice and when they fail basically they just stop running they don't do anything like explode like the the bathroom fan did that I had in there and blow molten copper all over the inside of the uh, fume hood so you know that's a lot better uh, the hose over here, you know, <laughs> another thing I did wrong up front was I used aluminum vent tubing, and that lasted maybe two weeks before it was all rotted out by the fumes. So, but this this plastic hose with steel hoops in it to give it shape, this is probably two years old now, and it's getting near the end of its life, but uh, it's still working. I have it. I have a new link to hose, and um, once this starts leaking really bad, I'll replace it. And what I do is, this is a long, long hose. It's about 30, 40 feet long. And I run it out into the field over on the other side of this trailer uh, just to get it away from me. Unless that direction is upwind, then I'll run it the other way out into the field just so I don't have to breathe the fumes getting blown back at me by the wind. So I just, you know, put it whichever direction is downwind. Usually it's that way, so that works pretty good. So, like I said, I think I'll, I'll box in all this stuff up on top just to make it up a little neater um, but the fume hood is just working really really well I'm pretty happy with it don't have a lot of complaints at the moment and I think this will be better for you guys when I'm uh, when I'm filming because these nice clean these nice clean door panes are nice and transparent now and with the light on the inside you won't have to deal so much with reflection making it hard to see inside because it was dark inside before and I'd be trying to film something going on in there, and all you see is a reflection of me out here. Which, you know, I don't mind being a star of my videos, but it's not necessarily what you guys are all tuning in for. Okay, so that's just a quick little update. If you want to, you can go back and look at my videos when I originally built this thing. But like I said, I did pretty much everything wrong back then. So I think I'm pretty much getting it right now. So... If anybody else wants a, a fume hood of their own, because it, it really makes it convenient, you know, when you're working with uh, with acids uh, like hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, um, to uh, keep the fumes away from you because they are bad, you know. Or, or if, you're, if you're trying to precipitate gold with uh, sodium metabisulfite, you know, and it's going to produce a lot of uh, sulfur dioxide when you do that, that is just the worst. You don't want that in your face. It's it's terrible. So, um, build yourself a fume hood. You know, I've got, I, I don't even have probably a hundred dollars in this thing. Maybe 75, 80, you know. So, build yourself a fume hood. Protect your lungs. Protect the coatings on your glasses. Protect your eyes. Protect your skin. Um, these chemicals will damage all of those things. So, uh, build yourself a fume hood. Okay. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Um, subscribe to see future videos. Press the little bell icon to be notified when they come out. Give the video a thumbs up. Uh, give it a like. And I'll see you in the next video. Well, maybe when we'll be doing something in the fume hood. So keep it safe out there. Bye.